born out of the First World War. The mythology of the origin of the piece, according to its creator, is that he was a cellist and an electrical engineer assigned to winning the war through the waves at the, at the Eiffel Tower in France. And he's sending the messages and he's playing in between. He's finding Mozart melodies through different tones for the knobs. And he said to himself one day, why does humanity build such great inventions to kill each other? I'm going to either throw myself off this tower or I'm going to create something beautiful out of this technology. And he chose the second one, gratefully, which is the Old Martinum. And he created this instrument, which he then premiered at the Paris Opera a few years later. So it's an electronic instrument. It makes like a sign tone. Exactly. Um, but you can really control the pitch of the sign tone in a very linear way. It has like the, um, the you know, he, he wanted the level of delicacy and, and interface that is something like a cello would have. So he tried to create an instrument that would have that amount of, of kind of detail in the way you could be expressive with it. And it's built out of radio technology. And so this piece that Claire's about to play is actually kind of a duet between you and Claire. It's definitely a duet, yeah. <laughs> Well, we got to have these really fun play dates where we would, we were in a basement in Harlem, um, fooling around with what was one of the great discoveries was the cool difference tones between the flute and the owned. So one thing, feature of the owned is that it doesn't have any friction in it. It's kind of odd. Um, it's kind of, that's why it's a little bit out of body and odd to hear because it's like, what is that? Is that a voice? Is that an instrument? It's kind of this combination of so many elements that's, oddly strange and familiar at the same time. And the flute has a lot of like guts in the sound. So the combination of those two things as they both can glissandi is kind of interesting. And you'll hear these like subtones hopefully that come out of the difference between Claire and my playing. All right, music by Suzanne Farron at Living Music Underground. Which is just that um, with the recording that you're gonna hear, is a live performance of Suzanne playing the Ong Martineau. So it's a duo, but it's sort of a disembodied duo. I'm playing with a composer who's playing an instrument, but she's actually sitting in the audience and playing with a recording composer. I'm going to do my very best to match her timing, which is very fixed, because it was recorded six years ago. Isn't it always fixed?
gorgeous. Just got everyone googling, like, own Mark Nowhere to buy. <laughs> Uh, so up next we have another New York City composer. Yes, indeed. I believe there's a Marcus Balter in the house. <laughs> it's so good to be here with two of my favorite people. I choose sisters from another place. So very happy to be here. Uh, so Marcos, we're about to hear some excerpts from your work, Pan. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that piece? Sure. So it's an hour-long piece that is sort of like a theater piece and it tells the story of the rise and fall of the demigod Pan. Uh, and it's a piece that was uh, written for flutists playing all kinds of flute in community networks. So in other incarnations of Pan, you have you know, high school kids, you have you know, little children, you have people from uh, senior centers and different kinds of communities coming together making sounds. But the overall story, which is the band story from which you know, words like panic and pandemonium come from, is really a moral tale about um, how seductive power can be, uh, but how ultimately oppression and violence and intolerance, even though it may initially be seductive to many, you know, comes to an end because it is unsustainable given that we are all naturally good. <laughs> Leave that right there. <laughs> uh, and, and Pan Pan played the flute, or the Pan pipes are. Pan played the flute, exactly, which you know was built uh, on the body of a nymph that Pan basically killed in order to make it sweet. Amazing. And just just to note, we're not doing the full hour-long version of Pan. <laughs> we are doing excerpts of Pan uh, performed by the incredible Claire Chase. Music by Marcos Walter here on Living Music Underground. Enjoy. <laughs>
that the ink is still wet on this one, which is why I'm charging on my iPad, because there were some changes made as of a few days ago. Um, this, is a, this is a piece called The Holy Liftoff, and it is a piece that is ongoing. Terry started writing it two and a half years ago, so we began this collaboration, this conversation of what The Holy Liftoff would be quite some time ago. Um, and his notion is that it's a piece that will just keep evolving, in fact, he's sending music, um, working on music as we speak. It's a piece that can live in many, many different forms. It can be a concert piece. Essentially, what I'm going to give you tonight is, is, the, is the concert suite of all of the solo material just kind of mashed together, so it's like a medley. But the piece also exists as a, a 75 or 80 minutes through composed piece for string quartet and flute, um, realized by the extraordinary Samuel Clay Birmingham, who I believe is here with us tonight. Um, Sam also edited the piece that you'll hear this evening, so there's a lot of sound magic sprinkled all over this piece. Yeah. The piece also exists um, as an open form score, and, and it's a kind of a graphic score with very loose instructions that can be used as a as sort of jam session material, very much in the spirit of, of Terry Riley's early pieces that you can see from the 60s. So in many ways, you know, this piece contains a whole life. It's his early experiments with totally open, free improvisation, and his love of through composed music, and his love also of handing a bunch of materials over to a group of people and saying, make something with this, I trust you, which is just such a blessing for a performer, um, such a responsibility, but also just an incredible gift. Um, I love about this piece also that in his program note, Terry wrote, so it's called The Holy Liftoff, and he wrote a little bit about sort of the ecstatic act of making music in general. Um, right, so the, the, the sort of idea of, he talks about getting high, but that not necessarily having anything to do with drugs at all, how you can sort of put yourself into this trance-like state, which is ascended from this sort of earthly position that we're normally in, which is such a cool way to end a concert, so. Yeah, and it's just an inspiration to, to see this, this human who is at the end of his life and he is talking only about things moving upward, about energy moving upward, about spirits being lifted. And he said that when he, he began sketching this piece, you know, he'd send me these drawings of creatures and you know, flying machines and everything was just drifting, drifting upwards. And he said this piece just has an energy that inexorably just lifts us upwards. And so you hear that in the chord progression and you hear that in very much in the spirit of the piece. Well, thank you so much to Claire Chase for uh, your incredible presence and can't wait to hear uh, this new piece by Terry Riley. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Okay.